Here we've got a Cyrus 7 a integrated amplifier and it's got a curious problem. If a, we turn the power on at the rear then what should normally happen is we go through a sequence of going through all the LEDs and it goes into standby and uh, we can turn it on from there. But when I turn this one on it goes through the routine and then just keeps going through that routine and it does that for some time uh, and then seems to clear itself so there's some kind of funny logic problem going on with this one this is not an audio uh, problem uh, so we need to get the covers off and see what's going on with this so here we are inside this unit then and I, I was suspecting a logic problem and most of the logic is on the, the front panel board here Everything here is generally power supply and audio related, so I was expecting the problem to be on that front panel. And fortunately I had another Cyrus 7, uh, so I was able to swap front panels over, and uh, that uh, confirmed that the problem was not the front panel, it is, it's something on the main board here. Uh, so then, okay, we, we need to look at uh, the uh, signals uh, going uh, through this ribbon cable. Uh, so I was probing away at the connector on the board there, and I could certainly see that there was a sort of repeated reset signal type thing going on. Uh, and then, uh, you know, so I started looking at the circuitry round about there. And if I take the ribbon cable off here, what we can see is that there's a, there's a logic device uh, here and some other uh, transistor diode type circuitry. Uh, so started kind of looking around there. And what I can see is there's actually a pin missing from this uh, logic device, which I've never seen anything like it, you know. for It doesn't look like the unit's been interfered with in any way. So to find something like that is very strange. Um, so I'll take a close up of that. We'll have a wee bit uh, closer look at that, and then basically I'm gonna gonna change that device and see if that uh, actually clears the problem. All right, so we need to get this device out here then, and this is where the the metcal comes in handy. Uh, you know, we've got a bits here that uh, actually just take out these uh, SOIC devices in one go. So uh, let's see how we go with this. And that's it, just as easy as that, the device is removed. So uh, we'll get a replacement for that and get that in, uh, get that fitted in. So I replaced the logic device and unfortunately it didn't make any difference. Um, so that's not the root of the problem here. And I, I think what's maybe happened with the broken pin there is someone's been in here before me and uh, maybe been probing a bit too enthusiastically around the pins of that device and uh, uh, that one's just broken off um, so we have to we have to look uh, further afield to find the, the problem and we we need to get down to looking at some uh, timing information to find this uh, problem I think now so uh, and the first obvious thing to look at is the the logic supply the 5 volt supply uh, so if we do that uh, the problem becomes very obvious uh, and we see here here's our 5 volt supply and in sympathy with the LEDs on the front panel all lighting up you can see that that supply is dipping it's going down to about 4 volts um, and that's that's pretty sure that that's what's causing the reset and then the sort of cyclic nature of the thing um, and then if we look at the input of that regulator uh, we see again that uh, you know a 5 volt regulator I'm maybe expecting 78 volts on the input and here we are we're peaking at 10 but we're dropping down to near 5 and that that's in sympathy with the LEDs on the front panel the more LEDs that light up the more current we're drawing and uh, so that supply is just dipping and it just tells us that the reservoir uh, the reservoir capacitor on that supply is dry so we'll need to replace that and that uh, I think that should fix our problem. I mean we'll replace all the capacitors on the board anyway that uh, just as part of general service but uh, 
Um, I've never seen one as bad as this and cause this kind of problem, but uh, there you go. So occasionally the amplifier did come out of this sort of cyclic uh, thing on the front panel and you could actually turn it on. And I was just curious to see what the, the output looked like. Um, so there was some, some findings here that were quite amusing as well. Uh, so I've actually got that set up at the moment. I've got a 1 kilohertz source going in and if I turn up the volume on the one channel, you know, it's kind of doing what you expect. Uh, a, a, you know, a nice enough output there and I can vary the level. Um, so this is one channel and you can see that I'm uh, three divisions from the centre uh, on that side. If I then go and look at the other channel, you can see that I'm just above two divisions. Uh, so the, the level is very, very different. And that's because these uh, capacitors in the, in the feedback network are so dry and they, you know, that's affecting the gain of the thing. And this is at one kilohertz. So at lower frequencies, the problem would be even worse. Um, so it must have sounded terrible, um, even even you know before the other problem uh, arose. Uh, so we'll we'll go ahead now and uh, uh, get the board out, change the capacitors, and hopefully that should solve all of these uh, these problems. Just before we take the board out then, um, we'll do a quick ESR check on some of these capacitors. The first thing, first one we'll look at is just the uh, 5 volt um, regulator. And we can just do that by measuring the ESR and the output of the bridge. And you can see it's near, it's sort of 7 8 ohms there. I'd expect that to be you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, something like that. So that's a sure indication this guy's dry. And then the the feedback capacitor, the feedback network capacitor, if I measure that, it's barely shown on the on the, the meter there. So the, these are completely dry. Uh, and you know, I've tried a few other ones and they're all the same. So we'll get this board out, swap all these capacitors, and that should hopefully solve our problem. Here we are then after a, a marathon uh, capacitor change. You can see all the parts here that had to come out. Normally you get a few that are read okay, but really every single one in this unit had to be changed. So I think it's been uh, used in a very hot environment for some time. Anyway, we we uh, we should be good to go now. But just to show some of the some of the measurements, I'm going to look at the input of the 5 volt regulator here as a power up. Uh, and a so you can see there that you know compared to before we were dipping away down to 5 volts but after power up it just sits up about 10 volts quite stable so that's uh, solved our problem there uh, and then if we we'll just check on the 5 volts quickly uh, That's very stable at 5 volts now, there's no dipping and funny business going on, so we're quite happy that everything's okay there now. Uh, so I'll quickly turn it on and we'll just look at the uh, test I did before where we we checked the level on both channels. Um, so that's it powered up and if we turn up the input now, we'll take it up to the same point we did before, three divisions off the zero uh, yeah, so that's one channel, so with any luck the other channel should be identical and there we go, exactly in the same place so that's been the problem and it's not really been a, a a digital logic problem, it's just simply been that the 5 volt supply was dipping and reset and everything um, so that's as good to go now, I'm going to go and have a listen and. Uh, Get the covers on and uh, that's this one finished.